They have their <clears throat> one of their rest stations right now. So. Oh, let me out. Is that a point then? Or? Um, yeah, that's a question that gets asked every single week. Yeah. And every single week, the there's the a different answer. answer. Sometimes there's a pointer. Not just, sometimes oh, people have to use their hand. Where's the stick? Sometimes there's a stick. Here. Uh, here's a laser. I didn't know you would be. Here, here, here. This is better. Yeah. Oh, ah, yeah, there's ah, that. Very good, very good. This one's good. Although they used to have that. Huh? Yeah, it used to have a rubber tip. It's <laughs> and then I guess uh, I use the laptop to. Exactly. Okay. So, Josh, you want to introduce introduction? Our, 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 uh, <laughs> we are very happy to have speaker. Steve Carlos from Chicago, and he's going to tell us about G minus two. You and G minus two. That's my right side of Chicago. I'm sorry. In Oregon. Oregon. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Uh, we are having uh, a lot of fun here in NYU. And uh, I'm going to tell you a few words about the mu g minus 2 puzzle, the more or less what is the status and, and what are the possibilities associated with it. Uh, got it? Uh, oh. uh, I have no idea how to. Exactly. Yeah, the problem is the, the pointer is not visible. I'm trying to to see. Uh, I don't know why it's not this. I also try to. Okay. Technical problem. You really need the slides. <laughs> I don't need to swing slides. it. Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to force. Let me force quit the keynote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. It's keynote, right? Yeah. Pretty. I'm wrong. There we go. Yeah. Okay. There's the right there. First clicking things. No. There we go. Uh, so let's try. Can I open up Keynote again? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Oh, let me. Well, I mean, look at all those things you have open. And the woman seen that was crazy. I see Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was wondering if that's you. Yeah. Oh, that's Gia, yeah, yeah. That's Gia. Gia's working in Juventus too. No, he came to our six years birthday. No, oh, okay. I did. Okay, so now let's share. Yeah. Okay, now. There why is. don't you hide the. Yeah. Let's, oh, let's, this here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. No problem. Okay. Okay. Sounds good? Yeah. Can you get the slides now? Yeah. Okay, very good. So, okay, this uh, talk is based on, on work uh, I did uh, with uh, Marcela, who is here, Sebastian Baum, Shinsha, Chang Yu, Navi McGuinness, and with my student, Nina Coy, who is now at Then, uh, okay, you know the standard model is working very well, and I don't need to describe it. Uh, and, uh, and as you know, we have uh, tested uh, very well. The electronic sector can be tested at the set peak by lab. Then, uh, and the fit is very good. So there are a few outliers that is the forward or symmetry at the bottom, for instance, that will indicate uh, a modification of the right hand capture of the bottom to the set. But, uh, uh, but uh, you know, overall. So you're not including the latest measurement of the bottom. Yeah, I'm not going to, correct. I was going to mention you should, that. because, yeah. So well, how can you? This, this doesn't have included the, the latest measurement from the Tevatron uh, of the W mass. So this will uh, be associated with a measure, uh, an average that is about 80.385 compared to 80.41 GB that, uh, that the Tevatron is measuring. I'm not going to discuss that in this talk. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you for reminding me. And as we know, not only the tourist sector is uh, tested, but uh, so this is a consistency check of the Higgs sector. The kappa is simply defined as the value that we extract from, from data compared to the expected value in the standard model. 
And as you see, the Caprius de Higgs to, to everything seems to be very consistent with the, the standard model. So, uh, so that means uh, that the standard model has uh, survived uh, precision tests. Uh, right now, you can allow 10% deviations of the Higgs couplings to, to the third generation engaged bosons, but not more than that. So, what I'm going to talk about today is the precision test of QD. So the, the most basic part of, uh, of the standard model. And you know that very well that the, the precession frequency of a spin in a magnetic field is governed by so-called G factor. Mm -hmm. And I include here the relative corrections and can be compared with the, the frequency, the cyclotron frequency of uh, the motion of a charge in a magnetic field. And if you compare both, the difference between the cycle frequency with, with respect to the precession frequency of the spin is proportional to the difference of the chip factor with respect to two. Mm -hmm. Apart from some very well known constants and a magnetic field. So if you have a very precise you measure magnetic field mm -hmm. and you know the charge and the masses uh, precisely. So while measuring this, this uh, different frequency, you can determine what is the value of uh, the departure of this G factor with respect to two. So um, precise measure of shift minus two, therefore, uh, are always associated with clever ways of measuring these differences, yeah. either by spectroscopy or by, uh, by uh, different methods. Or so Schwinger, of course, uh, realized that this factor is uh, modified by quantum corrections, and the first quantum correction is, is uh, proportional to alpha or two pi. Mm -hmm. uh, but today, we know these corrections are to five loops. They are, these are some representative graphs of the four loop order. And uh, you can also get all the QED corrections. So up to five loops. And uh, you know, at the point of, um, of five loops, there are slight differences that appear by, by two different groups. Uh, one that I'm not quoting, but uh, we have a minor implication in what I will tell you about. <laughs> so, so we know the, the, cor the QED corrections to a mu very precisely. And with that, we can go to not the muon, but the electron G minus two factor. That is the first thing you want to check. Yeah. And uh, in the old days, the electron G minus two factor was the way to determine alpha. Yeah. Then, uh, when I was young, so this was the most precise way that uh, you could determine the value of alpha. Mm -hmm. uh, today, there are, however, atomic uh, uh, physics uh, determination of alpha based on uh, what is atomic uh, matter wave uh, interferometry mm -hmm. and it has been done by two different uh, two different uh, elements rubidium and cesium so the the dependence on alpha is because this interferometry is governed by a laser and the interaction of this laser with the atoms is what governs the different phase of the two beams and then therefore that is proportional to alpha so, and that gives you the determination of alpha at the levels that are of the order of pi per per billion. So, so, very so Carlos, uh, can you remind us, in the case of the G minus 2 of the electron, that's a very clean thing. Yes. An elementary particle. Correct. Very, yeah, very there, yeah, there could be systematic. Uh, yeah, how, much in, how much in control is it? Just me. These people seem to, to be very confident of what, they, and they give you an error associated with it. I cannot judge. Yeah. Okay. So but how long would it take for us to get an opinion on that? Well, let, let me let me answer the question in a different way. Right now, there are two different determinations, and the two determinations by matter interferometry differ by five signals. And they're not by the same people. And they're not. One is a Berkeley paper, and the other uh, uh, in Paris. So then. Uh, so we have two different determinations of alpha. Unfortunately, they lead to different values of alpha. So this is the deviation of alpha with respect to an arbitrary value. And uh, unfortunately, they differ from the value you, you obtain alpha from G minus two. So this is the value that they obtain from G minus two, the small difference between empty um, bubble and uh, filled bubble is a small, discrepancy in the determination of, of the alpha to the fixed so this is the this is the same method for two different elements or they are two different they are essentially the same method so it is likely the case that it matters 
Es la Measure alpha in the It's just a rubidium It's just it's interferometry, right? But, uh, but yes, of course, uh, there's some systematic there that I don't, I cannot evaluate how accurate. Yeah, because what do they measure? I mean, you need to solve the atom exactly That's, or what? No, no, you don't need to yeah, solve it. Yeah, how much do you need? So this you, you need simply, so you have a, a laser that controls the 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 motion of this so then uh, and then you you measure so instead of having mirrors you have this laser that controls yeah. the different phases and that is all what you need in principle oh, uh, everything that. is controlled by alpha the, well, the yeah, in what sense everything is controlled by alpha there wow well, okay so this is what i want to ah, say yes. okay I, I, let's not yeah, enter yeah, into yeah. that but but yes true so there is clearly a systematic error that is not uh, being taken into account and that is reflecting the phi sigma discrepancy so the small discrepancy in the theoretical uh, determination of G minus two, so is what leads to these differences. And you see that there have been a, a strong improvement. This uh, allows you a G minus two determination of order the one in, one in a trillion, so very accurate. But of course, we cannot obtain some information. At the beginning, I remember that when this measurement was done, so people, including me, started to speculate that maybe there should be new physics to explain this difference. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, the next step was this measurement and uh, is uh, better uh, the, and discrepant. The Gabrielsen group that you are called evaluating. Yeah, this, this is the Gabrielsen group determines this. This is the new g -man. So the, what they do is they perform by spectroscopy, spectroscopy so determination of uh, of the frequency, the precession and, and uh, um, rotation frequency, and uh, from there they obtain the value of G minus two. Yeah, uh, and from G minus two and using the formula that you will know, you can obtain alpha. That is the determination of alpha. That you obtain. This is one group. The other group by using interferometer. And the blue ones for what? Sorry. The blue, ones? Is it the blue, blue one is uh, 2008. Was a previous measurement. Was it the same group? Uh, no. This, this is, well, I, to tell the truth, I don't remember. But, but the only thing I remember that this is a, a very recent measurement by Gabriel's. Mm -hmm. I met these people when, when I went to Northwestern. Gabriel's is Northwestern. Yeah, Northwestern. Yeah, they are not Northwestern. Oh, they have because they, they moved from 2008, you know, all these people I'm moved to the Chicago area. Yeah, they were at Harvard, so I know. Yeah, they, they were, ah, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, so I'm just curious, is it the same group? That... I, I have no idea because uh, they were part of the ACME group, measurement the electric dipole moment. I don't remember uh, them being the one, but maybe it's the same. Uh, that I, 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 I know this. This is irrelevant anyway. This is the only important thing. Well, it's, thing just, it's just that given that thing, they're close to that one. So it's I, I know. OK? So what is the conclusion from here? The conclusion is that the uh, unfortunate Unfortunately, current electron G minus 2 precision allows a determination of the electromagnetic structure cost at the level of 0.1 per billion. Mm -hmm. So, very good. If you assume no BSM physics corrections to it, so you have to assume that you are in the standard model, you obtain the value of R. Mm -hmm. Instead, the other measurements, atomic interferometry, is in principle not dependent on new physics. It's simply the, the interaction of, uh, of photons with uh, charges. Yeah? Um, so if you translate this to G minus two, give you a one part per trillion, per, per ten to minus thirteen point one per trillion. So it's also not depending on quantum fluctuation at the level of length scale of the quantum element of the electron. This is why you don't need to go to alpha to the fifth. That's the level of the that's level. correct. It's zero zero momentum for the effect. That's true. That's um, true. But, and then. But there is a five sigma discrepancy coming from, from alternative determinations of alpha. At this point, you can only test corrections that are an order of magnitude larger than this, 10 to minus 2. So you have something that affects G minus 2, that at that level you can test it. Otherwise, you don't. Let me also comment on the, on the fact how can you test physics at the weak scale or heavier. So in that case, the new corrections to lepton G minus two tends to go like the mass of the lepton divided by the mass of the physics square. So therefore, if you can test this at the 10 to minus 12, that implies a sensitivity to G minus two of the muon or for the few times 10 to minus seven, if you translate to it. 
but is almost orders of magnitude larger than the current mu mu muon g minus 2 sensitivity. In other ways, the cur currently the g minus 2 of the muon is the best way of testing physics at the wave scale and not the latter. Yeah. However, if you have very light physics, that can change. And I will comment on that. What about me on G minus two? Okay, so now you have all these corrections that are proportional to mass of the lepton M or N heavy square. In particular, weak interactions start to, to play a role. So they give a correction of order 10 to minus nine. So the, you have the so-called light by light contribution that I here represent very naively by a pion interaction. So then, uh, and the, also the corrections of the same order. Mm -hmm. And there was, for a while, there was a question of what was the sign of this determination because it was not possible to connect it with the experiment. By now there is a consensus and different uh, way of determining always with the same contribution, yeah? about the same contribution. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, at the time I, I remember writing a paper with Jan Chudich, and at, at that point, we were worried really about this more than what I'm going to talk later about. Mm -hmm. But apparently, this has been resolved and this has been uh, perturbed in a certain way. Then the, there's the most important contributions that are not the QED ones, that are the droid bike and polarization contributions. These are very important contributions. And uh, at, they have always determined by dispersion relations. Essentially, you compute this by uh, considering the, the <coughs> adrenal cross sections, e plus e minus going to others, and using uh, the special relations that we talk about, so you, you will able to determine this control. Sorry, Carlos, can you remind me, how do you get this 19 accurate error on this 92? Yeah, this is... This is the the, the, this the, is the, the, the Russian by Einstein and yeah, correct, exactly, and Medical, exactly. But, but and this and is even more than that. So I, I know. Is there so any for instance, any there is a there is another calculation on the lattice of this. Oh, there's a lattice. There is a lattice calculation and gives something like one oh nine, so close to close to the value that will be a one sigma away from this. But so, but the, if I were to take the, only the lattice, estimate, yeah. Will be a small, con I mean, will be 0.2 times 10 to minus 9. No, 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 but what, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking if I take only the, so now, pre remember, I, I can replace it by computing the light by light on the lattice was considered impossible. To be yeah, but, but they did. Yeah. So now they are doing it. They're what doing is it. the error on the light by light? It's, uh, it's similar. It's so very good. Yeah, really? Is is they that consider good? that it's about 20%. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that is what they quote, of course. Wow. Yeah. Again, these are all the systematic errors are the things that we cannot. Uh, no, really, no, but yeah. no, this is really. Yeah. 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 So, and all these measurements uh, agree with all these determinations agree. I will talk about uh, one problem here later. Yeah. Okay, so far so good. Okay. So, let me tell you so, I told you that uh, you have to rely on other cross sections. The other cross sections, uh, at least until uh, a couple of years ago, they have some dispersion. These were the most precise determinations. They're somewhat different. So then, uh, but uh, these two determinations, uh, what they use to, to determine the energy variation is to use initial state radiation. Mm -hmm. And with that, you uh, control. So the, there is a, two different determinations that are these, that uh, instead they vary the energy. This kind of energy that are in cross sections. Mm -hmm. And they both have different systematic error, but the compatibility of the of, of both measurements uh, is a good sign. Mm -hmm. So then uh, so what uh, there was a big effort that was called the Shima S2 theory effort, that they gathered uh, experts uh, for about a year and uh, they tried to handle all this uh, and also came up with certain prescription uh, of the central value and errors that you can associate with it. And, um, but before doing that, let me tell you about some recent development. There is uh, these two measurements that are very recent. So one called CMD3 and SMD2K. They are all depend on scanning the, the energy and they differ. Yeah. But again, by a large amount, more, more important than anything, this value if you transfer it to, to what will be the, 
the experimental, the total uh, determined theoretical value will be in better agreement with this experiment than the values that you will obtain from averaging over all the other measurements that have happened in the last uh, 20 years. So the, there is a big effort in understanding why this value is so discrepant with the other ones. And the methodology? The methodology is, is very similar. So therefore, it's a, all a question of, uh, of uh, systematics. Yeah. And it's CMD2 is the same? It's the same. It's essentially using the same data that is very strange, but obtaining a different result. So that, that's why uh, we have to understand that that will be possible, I guess, and the file is continuing to understand. But this, this is a very important correction. So there is a, about uh, 15 times 10 to minus 10, when the discrepancy with respect to this value, that is the average value that was obtained. Okay. Why you call it a new by plus by minus? Because this is dominated. That is dominant, yeah. But, the, the you, but, you other, the raw, but you also <coughs> add other processes, or is this the only process? The dominant, yeah, you have, you have other processes. So you have uh, three pion data, you have uh, two pions and photon data. This is by far the dominant one. Yeah. I understand, but you need to have it at the level yeah, of yeah. 1%. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so, okay, very good. That is the, the error yeah? that they estimate, about 1%. And the, the small corrections that come from that process are taken into account. But, but anyway, that, that is... Uh, Jumping ahead, this goes in the direction of alleviating... Yeah. I, I will show you. Of washing out the discrepancy. Of washing, of washing out the discrepancy. And these people knew that once. Right. Of course they knew. Yeah. Maybe by. But, but they. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying anything. I mean, you're like saying that <laughs> they, they are Russians and we don't trust them. This is not Novosibirsk. This is not Both SMD2K mm -hmm. and CMD3 are both Novosibirsk Novos uh, measurements. So they are using the same data. So it's uh, right, CMD3 is different data than CMD2, right? They upgraded their Yes, yes, of course, of course. The, the, that I didn't mention, thank you very much. So the, there is uh, the previous measurements, CMD, SMD and CMD2. And the look at the errors, CMD2 cannot be compared with CMD3. Yeah. So more data, updated detectors. Sorry, what? CMD2 is Sorry? Yeah. Is there any difference? Oh, CMD too. So I take it back. Since you're the expert you're on, you're on CMD, yeah. um, uh, is there any difference in like the analysis pipeline for these things? Is this something where they could take the new analysis pipe, a new analysis, or is it the same analysis pipeline? I'm wondering whether they could do the same thing that they did for this analysis and just do it again for the old data with everything they know. Right. The well, uh, people ask them to do that, and uh, for some reason they are unable to. Do it. But I, I don't, I don't know the reason. <laughs> But, but anyway, so, so yeah. can you remind me something I'm always confused about? So you you also include pi plus pi minus photon. Yeah, because yeah. How correct. do you distinguish between the photon emitted by the final legs and the photon emitted by initial radiation? Because what? the photon by emitted initial radiation should not enter into vacuum polarization. That is correct. That is correct. And so the, is the, the effective energy. Actually, most of these measurements that were performed before were considering the initial state radiation and the variation in energy associated with it. So they have a way to stop. They are ways of uh, yeah. asking things that uh, are beyond my, my capabilities of understanding, mm -hmm. but, but yes. Mm -hmm. But yes, that's true. But because you need, you, you, you yeah. don't need the, uh, a gross. You Absolutely. Need, you need yeah. a very precise, so the, the, the alpha long yeah. effects are bigger than percent. They are compact. They are the of order. Okay, so that is the present status. This was the, the value that this uh, G minus two effort determined. Uh, and the, since then, there is this new measurement that is in very good agreement, but the CMD3 that unfortunately disabled. So SMD is both, both in Russia. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And SMD was performed after the G minus two days. Yes, so then, okay. Last but, yeah. Okay, so this is the situation. So let's go to experiment and I'll comment on the lattice later. Okay, so then uh, 
You know, then uh, we had this uh, apparatus that came from borrow from Brookhaven that measure essentially that the, the difference between the secondary frequency and the precision frequency. But uh, so in the way they did it, you have a perpendicular magnetic field, and then you see the, the spin process compared to the motion, the, the momentum direction, mm -hmm. and then. You measure you measure the direction of spin by analyzing the decays of the muon into positron, well, mu plus into positron electrinus, and there is a dependence on the spin direction that uh, that appears there, and then from there you you can determine what is the value. Then uh, now there is this is standard model prediction again from the old determination that is the correspond to the yellow band I showed you before. And this is the 2021 determination. This was the original <coughs> result, and uh, the Fermi result essentially confirmed it with an experimental average that uh, is very close to, at that point, was very close to uh, the middle of it. The, the errors were the same. The only thing I want to mention here is that their estimate of system, systematic errors is a small thing uh, after the tick. Mm -hmm. So most of the error is supposed to be statistical in this determination. That means that if you have more data, you will be able to reduce the errors by a square root of n. Okay, at that point, well, that was in 2006, we, we, um, we had this determination of the difference between the experimental value and the standard model, and uh, it's of 2.5 times 10 to with an error of 59, so that was a 4.2 sigma discrepancy between theory, assuming that this is real theory, and experiment. Yeah. So that uh, led uh, to a lot of activities of people trying to understand that. But uh, first, let me tell you the experimental status. <coughs> so then this was the analysis of only the rank one data. By now, on August 10th, they release a new value that is based on rank one, one, two, and three together. That is about four times the luminosity that they had before. So that means that the error shrinks by, by a factor of almost as two. And they still have a lot of things to analyze. That is about uh, 20 times the BNL result so far. They have uh, so a little bit more than eight. So then, uh, so what is the result of the new determination of G minus two? So, well, they no longer show a standard model prediction if you go to the paper because they don't trust it anymore. But you can, I put it in parallel to, to see what's going on. So this is the Brookhaven result, the Fermi result, it was the 2020 result. And then, um, and now you see the, the difference between the new determination including the, the rank two and three, that is a little higher, so more discrepant with respect to, to the standard model prediction, but with a smaller error, when you put the weight in the error, you obtain essentially the same central value, but with a reduced error by a factor of 1.6 with respect to the previous error. So if you take a face value, the difference between this and this, that will be a 5.1 sigma discrepancy, so that, uh, that is breaks the standard of five sigma, but uh, but of course now we have a question about this. Okay. Okay. So in a sense, uh, therefore, you are comparing values that are obtained from data. Uh, G minus two is obtained from data, and also the the values that are by polarization is obtained by data. Also. So. So essentially, that, that uh, people believe at that point that this should be uh, taken very seriously. So the recent CMD3 and SMD2K result have not been uh, taken into account in the determinations. Yeah? And also the latest result that I will do. So new physics, uh, we know it from, from many, many years ago that there are too many possibilities. So for instance, uh, the, the simple thing, you, you add a scalar, a real scalar that couples to, to muons and only to muons, and then you, you can 
you can uh, explain G minus two, provide the scalar values below uh, two times uh, the mu mass. So now if you couple to muons, uh, you induce a coupling to, to photons at the loop level. So, so it's not, uh, there's only a, a narrow region of parameters where everything is consistent with the uh, with theory experiment, but this is uh, one possibility. Other is to put a, a gauge boson that couples to muon, for instance. There, uh, there you have the Babar experiment again that controls all the region about 200 GB. And then there is so-called Trident process. That is, uh, if you obtain a vector-like interaction, you have this, uh, this interaction with neutrinos also that uh, allow you to constrain this. And you see that essentially all the region with masses above uh, 200 MeV is also ruled out. Where is the Trident thing? The yeah. Trident what, is what, this. what experiment? Yeah? What experiment? A CCFR. Uh, ask me, where is it? Okay, what is it? I don't know. So the field. Yeah. 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 What is CCFR? Well, okay. But that's a matter. But exclude exclude the whole region about 200 MV. So the only region that allows it here. But if you cap into electrons, then you rule out also the region of below. For instance, the, the so-called dark photon is excluded below 200 MV. If you consider dark photons. It's a funny one. Eh? Is that familiar? Yeah. I was just wondering if that could push down further. <laughs> okay, so if you take uh, in that case, you have processes involving electrons that allow you already have a bar to rule out. Even G minus two of the electron, that is what is called this work here. So start to be sensitive when you have very light particles. So and can exclude the region uh, uh, favored by G minus two. And the, and again, so you put a scalar cap into electrons again. So that is the reason I allow for G minus two is called cover. So it's important uh, to, to keep uh, couplings to muons alone if you want uh, the simplest explanation. There are many other solutions that have been used. What? So actually, parting is left to quartz, additional Higgs. Many, many things that uh, have been used to explain the G-2, including to make overgroup happen supersymmetry. Then, uh, and, uh, you know, supersymmetry, uh, as you know, so double the spectrum, so then, uh, for every chiral fermion associated with complex scalar. And uh, the only thing I, I want to remind you is that there are two parameters that are important. First, there are two Higgses. And the extension beta is the ratio of vacuum expectation values. And also, unfortunately, you have all the parameters associated with the bro breaking of supersymmetry, so called broken mass times. So, and uh, there are a few that will play a role here uh, that I will describe when, in the next slide. Okay, I don't tell you what. So, there are two essential contributions to, so important contributions to G minus 2. One comes from the interchange of the partners of, of this mu. So then, uh, and uh, this is a left-right operator. <coughs> so therefore, uh, involves the left and right-handed mu. And uh, the most important contribution here comes from the hypercharge uh, fermion, the super partner of the, of the B, the so-called Bino. And this is uh, this contribution that is here, that is proportional to to what? To the coupling to so hypercharge bosons to the supersymmetric parameter associated with the with the pino. And there is this parameter mu tension beta simply appears in the left right mixing of the of the spions. Forget this uh, mu dependence and depends on the mu mass. The only thing I want to stress here is that the, the parameter mu, that is called Higgsino mass parameter, it regulates the mass of the superparameter Higgs only appears uh, here and doesn't appear in the loop dependence. So therefore, if you push mu to, to large values at this, at this level, you can increase in an arbitrary way the, the G minus two correction. Contrary to this, that is uh, the main contribution, usually for mu further of the width scale, that, uh, that is governed by weak interactions, 
then it's parametrically larger than this. So, and um, also depends on mu and tangent beta, but observe that the mu dependence also appears in the loop and it push mu to very large values. This, this correction uh, goes to zero. Contrary to this. Okay. And that plays a role. And both of them are, uh, as I said, proportional to tangent beta, so therefore there's a parametric dependence that, uh, that you can use to enhance the loop corrections. In the rapid uh, approximation, so then uh, the corrections to SUSI are of order 150 times 10 to minus 11. I remind you that uh, the, the discrepancy, if you trust the old determination of G minus 2, is of order 250 times uh, the ratio of Hansi with respect to the SUSI mass k times tangent beta. So therefore, if you take tangent beta 10, so you, you need particle masses of order 250 GB. If you raise it to 60, you can raise uh, the masses to more than 500 GB. And this is enough to, uh, to uh, avoid experimental limits in the weak set. Okay, so SUSI models have also dark matter that in principle have nothing to do with this, but uh, I tell you only a comment about this. So then, um, you know, dark matter in SUSI models is strongly constrained by the so-called direct uh, dark matter detection experiments. And in SUSI models, there is a, a, a funny dependence of the detection on the relative uh, sign of mu with respect to the genomasses M2 and M1. So actually, so then uh, when, when you do the corrections, it turns out that, uh, that you have this dependence, assuming that the, the, the light supersymmetry particle is a vino. So you obtain that the dark detection is uh, suppressed when the when there's relative signs of mu the, that appear before and M1 is negative. Mm -hmm and uh, enhance <coughs> in the opposite way. So just to give you a more graphical dependence. So if you take, if you take, for instance, uh, the dependent for mu times M1 positive as a function of, of, the, of the heavy Higgs, you see that uh, they converge to large values with respect to the, the case where mu is negative, where uh, overall, the, the limits are, are much weaker and therefore taking mu times M1 negative uh, is preferable from this point of view with respect to mu times M1 positive. Now this has to do with, uh, with this because observe that if you take mu times M1 negative this correction to G minus 2, well this, this factor is positive by the way, so the decorrection to G minus two will interfere, will interfere with that. Yeah. Um, and also you will not be able, since the correction should be positive, you, if this, this product is negative, you, can, you will not be able to, so to push mu to large values to, to correct for G minus two, because that will bring the correction to negative values. Carlos, should there be also a contribution that uh, grows with the beta in the A term? No, no, the, 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 the A term dependence comes from the left right mixing here, yeah. and this A minus mu tension beta. It's like this bottom correction. Yeah, uh, because A term is H1, left and left, left and right. Oh, it's the new, and, it's the and it's, uh, it's yeah, the new, it's the, from the superpotential one. The right. Basis. It's proportional to yeah. superpotential term. Okay. Yeah. okay? So thank you for the question. Well, to make a long story short, therefore, depends on if you take mu times M1 positive or negative, you are restricted to, to be at values of mu below 500 GB or anything you want. So this, uh, by the way, these are different concepts. This is the allowed region by G minus two, and the older region that is uh, here is screwed. So, so you, you are able to live in this region of sorry, in this region of parameters, and otherwise uh, you are screwed. So the, this bound is a, 
I yeah, guess yeah. what is the I'm very confused. the next city bit? Yeah. Very confused. Yeah. Okay. All the shaded region is. Is it going on? No, no. Is, is, is it okay? Open? That is okay. Okay. Uh, that is the confusion. Uh, so all these regions are okay. No, okay, and this but, but if you have the a mu, you want to get a mu, the one that survives is the one that is the color of a mu. Yeah, so this, this is the reason. I, I, yeah, that's that's like I was thinking. All this is excluded. Yeah. Um, the other ones are good for other things. And the intersection of all of them with a mu is the one that's. Yeah, good. this is the reason why everything is okay. Yeah, and this and this. And you have to forget these dashed lines. This is simply to represent the next Yeah, no, I'm just a, a rough approximation. So essentially, what you what you see here is that when mu times n one is positive, you need larger values of mu, and also you can extend mu to large values. But uh, however, if you take uh, mu times n one negative, you are restricted. You cannot take mu because otherwise, for mu to large values, the correction turn out to be negative. Okay. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still confused on how to think about the, 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 the shaded regions. Those are the regions that are okay. That, those are okay. For different, for different, for different things. experiments, but don't I want to know so, some area that's okay with everything? Yeah, yeah that, that, that everything. is the ratio. So the, the dark. And this is G minus two. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, so sorry, Carlos, I remember looking at similar things long ago, and I think Raman was looking at something like that, thinking that in the region where everything is heavy and G minus two is large enough, the mu is large, it compensates the x mass that is negative, right. and there is a sort of flat direction. There's another back, by the way. And you see. have to worry about vacuum decay. Very good. So that that is the vision, of course. This is so it. this is a this is that would this would be the preferred ratio in that case. Yeah. If you want to avoid vacuum decay. Mm -hmm. So actually, this is uh, also uh, the preferred ratio if you want to push. In general, mu to low values. If you have some prejudice about natural naturalness, so, and the, the funny thing is that, the, and I'm not going to continue on this uh, the supersymmetry, but the, the funny thing is that if you go to that region of parameters where mu times n one is negative, so you find that, the, and you want to control that matter, you 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 find an enhancement in the red the case of the of the winon to winon gamma, and that allows you to to test this uh, hypothesis uh, at NHC. But then anyway, I'm not going to, to expand on this. And th this, uh, you can you can read out this. So, what can I say? Ah, very good. So then, uh, but I would like to spend my last 15 minutes on the other question. So then, uh, so apart from the, what, what is the reason why these people started to doubt about the determination was not associated with the, with the CMD3 determination, but is associated with the lattice determination. There was a recent lattice determination and very back polarization contributions that unfortunately differs from the one that you obtain from data driven methods. And differs in a significant way. So right now, if you take uh, this lattice determination, that by the way is one collaboration. So, um, and it has to be double checked. But uh, so the discrepancy with this and experiment is only, well, it used to be 1.5 sigma, with a new determination, it's about 2.1 sigma, mm -hmm. but it's only 2 sigma compared to the 5 sigma that you obtain from, from this discrepancy. Mm -hmm. And there's also a 2 sigma, more than 2 sigma discrepancy between this and this that are are supposed to be determinations of the same thing. Now, I also argue that uh, this, this is standard model. This should not be called standard model because it's based on other cross sections that may be affected by new physics. And uh, instead, this is a first principle determination of standard model. Yeah. So, a lot, yeah. No, I, I, I'm just wondering. So, the electric field that you showed at the beginning right. relies on the extrapolation, in partly rely, it relies yeah. on having alpha electromagnetic. That's correct. Yeah. I, the, I'll tell you. Right. I'll tell you. I'm not uh, forgetting. Okay, because because this should change the way. Absolutely. You know. I, I'll tell you in a second. Mm -hmm. So, okay, these are the discrepancies, so, and we don't know why this is different. Okay, very good. 
So now, lattice evaluation. The original lattice evaluation happened uh, almost simultaneously with announcement in, uh, in 2020, but since then, many groups, and I did a partial list of them, have tried to double check the determination of alpha, of the lattice coming from, from the lattice in a narrow window of energies that represents about a third of the total contribution. And the, so far, all these works, all these people have not found that are based on four or five different groups, have not found any uh, problem with the original BMW result. So in the sense that they get the same result. They get exactly the same result. Well, yeah. roughly, but, but yeah, they get good agreement with what uh, was here. Mm -hmm. So we still haven't checked this because this is uh, supposed to be all contribution and this is only a narrow energy contribution but so far they have oh, not they checked a narrow window a narrow window yeah like but now the fact gives it a normalization <laughs> right yeah in the narrow window you already see a discrepancy between the value that you would obtain and the value you obtain from data in the lab so therefore uh, so it's a prelude of what will happen i know that the people at fermilab are working on trying to to have the whole determination they were promising by the end of the year and I don't know what is the story now, but, but yeah, this well, move to next year. But, but it's true that they only have to check 30% of the total result. So we know that it be 30%. Yeah. And the prospect for improving like uh, feature lattice calculations to shrink that error, because now that's the biggest error. Right? Yeah, yeah that, is, that is what I'm trying to say. So then uh, all these works have double checked though. The Fermi people are trying to, to really check the whole contribution. The, that that you saw there, that, that has a large, apparently in order to, to, to get this, you need a lot of computational power. Yeah. It's very, very expensive. And uh, people are working in that direction. So, so your question is, how can we reduce this error? Well, we need several determinations. I don't think that these people will be able to alone to improve this. But, that but the, the, the nice thing that sorry, they sorry that error there that you are seeing that looks so good is an amazing achievement. No, no, I know it's an amazing achievement. So the question, my question no. is, that since that's the, the, the nice that's thing, way bigger than the experimental error at this point, so no. you know the nice thing is that this collaboration they provide a, a very detailed account of all their error estimates, so they can people can jump that is people can jump and double check. So of course uh, there could be a hidden large systematic error in the, in the cross-section evaluation that uh, CMD3 is the question, so why CMD3 is different. Um, or there could be new physics contributing to them. So I will, just as an example, I will show you a possibility of putting new physics in that cross-section and to show you how difficult it is. Yeah. And uh, now, precisely Ricardo's Ricardo's question. So if you introduce this, they will have immediately an, an effect on alpha times C and will disturb the precision measurement results. Yeah. And this was uh, actually analyzed by, uh, by Alberto Sirlin and collaborators here. Mm -hmm. So the last paper of Alberto actually. Then it was the the experimental error, passeras to S. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. I will correct that. Yeah, passer, uh, yeah, okay. I will correct the experimental error <laughs> in the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I type it fast and then. No, uh, the uh, is a student of Alberto. Eh? Ah, really? Ah, oh, so sure. But here I, I correct it for that. Thank you very much. So then uh, I, I will correct it later. No? So. So it's not, right? The, uh, exactly, you're right. Yes. Long, I mean. Yes. You see, that there is a, a, a strong dependence on, on sigma hadrons, again, by dispersion relations. But there is an set square dependence. So, therefore, the farther away from M set that the corrections are, the smaller the corrections that you can see here, for instance. And the, you should not allow this is the energy at which the, the modifications appear. And you see that the, provided you are below 700 MeV, everything is fine. But as soon as you go up, well, okay. Uh, the value from W goes in the wrong direction. Yeah, but the, the, I, I think one of the points of... Uh, 
Yeah, electroweak pushes you to the lower range you know. right. But that's precisely the range where the data uh, we trust them more. Right. Yeah. Then the data will be plus or minus one. Right, right. So therefore, so it's yeah, like correct. So th therefore, it's a problem. So it, it, it seems like, um, yeah, it, to what extent this last is a termination. Well, okay. Okay. I, I, yeah, I agree. I agree. So this is, in my opinion, this is a, a, a fun part. So but can, can, can we assign in the lattice? So in the lattice, the termination? Yeah, yeah. You, you, can, you can assign the, the energies associated with this. So you can make a, the question is, can you make a correspondence with this energy rate? You can. Actually, the narrow window of energy refers essentially to this energy. You can put in one-to-one -one correspondence. Okay? So, the, so therefore, if you want to modify this, you have to do some crap at very low energies that is very dangerous. Yeah? Because, uh, you know, the, everything is very well known and uh, you don't want to... With the kappa? Yeah? You don't want to disturb anything. So... Again, uh, for G minus two, contrary to that dispersion relation, dispersion relation like this has a one over S dependence, contrary to one over S minus MC. So you have a low energy physics you can affect G minus two. Yeah. So the, that is a, so the way of going, if you want to put new physics or regular section, do it at low energies below, below the raw mass, essentially. That is what you have to do if you want to do that. Uh, and there is another problem that is uh, you would imagine that uh, you can increment the, the hadronic cross section by putting some, something that does it. But the problem that the, the correction goes in the opposite direction, unfortunately. So because uh, the, the value of the hadronic backward section that you would infer from BMW is larger than the one that uh, you obtain from EE. So therefore, if you want to do anything, you have to put something that interferes. A ghost. Eh? A ghost. A ghost. <laughs> interferes with this, then, uh, and uh, that is a problem. So, uh, well, it's not that. So, so what can you do? So the, the first thing that you try is, of course, uh, to put something that interferes, another vector-like interaction, like a pair to pi pi, so in similar ways to gamma, but uh, now you have a different coupling, yeah? Two electrons and two atoms. So let's try that, and that was tried by uh, our friends, De Lucio, Maciero, and company. Hopefully I don't spell, misspell De Lucio. But the uh, simple thing, uh, so then uh, I, uh, you put a, a set prime that couples to the first energy. Yeah? Can, you, can you do that? So it doesn't couple to the muon. So th this is not affecting the muon directly by the usual new physics contribution, but it's affecting the G minus two indirectly by the modification of the adrenaline vacuum polarizations. So you do that, you can, you can see what is the correction with respect to, to the standard model, depends on the mass and the width, depends on the isospin breaking interactions of the, of the new gauge boson, and depends on, of, obviously, on the coupling to electron. Yeah? So you now you have to compute the, the width, and the width you can compute it in the usual way with the R factor, so inherited from, from, the, from the usual formalism that you have to default. So, so you try to do this, you say, okay, let's put this with brute force and try to, to work. And it doesn't work. So, but the reason why it doesn't work is uh, it's complicated. So then, uh, doesn't work I, means that it means. I tell you, I tell you. <laughs> it works. I mean, it works. So that you can make it work. So you think parameters, but but there are disastrous consequences. Uh, there's a consequence that I will show you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you you do the correction. So so the most important correction is in the pi pi, as I was discussing before. Mm -hmm. And you obtain that if you want to modify this, then. Uh, you need a, a product. This is a product that is tested and normalized to, to the electromagnetic correction. So, of order three times 10 to minus four. So, very weakly interact. Yeah. And that, uh, and that you, you make it and it works. So, it works, but it has a lot of consequences that you have to test. Yeah. So, first of all, the isospin breaking effects can also affect the biomass differences, you know. And then, um, and that can be checked. 
and you see that the only way of not disturbing this pi mass difference is to have an SOP break interaction lower than 0.1. So then, uh, so you cannot take arbitrary values of the of the <coughs> bar couplings, but they should be uh, restricted to small values. So the the lower these uh, values, the larger the electrolytic interaction has to be to produce the correction. Now, the problem is that uh, you're happy, you obtain a model, and I tell you that how to avoid all the experimental constraints, but it's a disaster. So, because now you can take the final result, you can subtract the value of the, of, of the, of the set prime contribution, and you can obtain what is the value that the standard model should produce. And the problem is that when you try to compute the standard model correction, you see a very similar features, a very, a very narrow resonance feature there that you cannot avoid. Yeah? So, so it's a problem. So also, you know, you have to use not only, here is the rho omega system, the, the masses are of order 100 MeV, they mix. You so have you to- add, You put your C prime close to the rho on no. top of it. Yeah, so I show you what happens if you don't. It's even worse. So, so here, here you, I put it close to the row with the hope that you can hide it in the row omega mixing. But the problem is that you also have the three pion data, so it is, it's very hard. So it doesn't work. So to, it goes in the opposite direction for the three pion if you do this. So there, therefore, you have a, a non trivial modification. That, uh, that is very hard to hide, so you can produce uh, set values. But so if you don't do that, if you don't try to hide in the raw mail system, you, you find something like this that is totally unacceptable, right? This, so you find a, a you find a, a resonance peak close to the place where you set the mass of the set prime. So it doesn't work. So how the what what is the reason why this appears here? If the reason is that you have a, a, a very narrow width, right, that, the, that is enough to produce a modification. And you cannot smear, we try to smear it. That's it. So then, now, the set prime is not very well defined. You can assume that uh, there's other stuff that increase the width of the set prime. So what if I increase the width of the set prime? So in that case, it works. Then uh, I mean, from this point of view, you can you can really uh, you can really hide it, and then uh, and actually you can hide it, but for masses that are different from the on this, the modifications are within the errors. So, for instance, with a with a width of four to five percent, with all these pion thing, you use the, sorry, with, with all these pion going the, without the, the pion, the pion, the pion mass difference. Oh, the pion mass difference, yes. So you control GVOD to be 0.08. So, so that, that brings the pi mass difference within, uh, within a row. Yeah. So provided below 0.1, that's OK. So what implies is that uh, you have to control the coupling to electrons in an asymmetric way to, to fit the data. Yeah. But that works. So that, that works. And actually, then. Uh, I'm not advocating this. I'm telling you what are the difficulties uh, to associate this. And this is what one should have to do. So this so is this one here with is some other and this in this object. Correct. I tell well, I, I, if you want that uh, talk, I show you a model, but uh, that avoids. Yeah, you, you make it decay to something that is uh, non-standard. Yeah. It's not you cannot do invisibly, by the way. So the simplest thing will be add a chi one that the, the case invisible, maybe it's a dark matter, but that is very highly constrained by Babara. So you do photon plus invisible. That is a real mess. Mm -hmm. So so you have to decay in a mixed state that constrains some invisible and other product. But you can do that. Because the interaction rate is you don't thermalize this, et cetera, et cetera. Really I, I did, uh, uh, yeah. They, they, no. The interaction uh, is such that uh, no, you can't. Yeah, I didn't study cosmological. Uh, that would seem conservative. Yeah, it's like 10 minus 3. Eh? It's totally thermal. That's what I was Yeah, yeah, no, that's why. I didn't study. This should thermalize. That sounds um, bad. But, eh? It sounds bad. Why? Then. Uh, and effective. No, no, but this is the case, right? It's the case, this has an 800 MeV mass. Then, uh, I thought it was decaying into invisible stuff. No, no, it doesn't. So, no. Oh. No, no. 
No, you, you said it's yeah, partly I, I visible don't know and partly the, visible. Uh, so eh? partly, you said partly visible and partly visible. Yeah, yeah, correct. So then, uh, but, but this guy, uh, okay. This guy, um, I haven't. It's dedicated, it's dedicated to tell you the truth. It's dedicated to yeah. and part. To 0 0.1. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't studied the cosmology, but it's a good question. So I, uh, I was worried about the particle physics stuff. Uh, Okay, let, let me answer that question. Exactly. Okay, so it works for the data. We can produce benchmarks also then uh, to, to do this. So then uh, I see the coupling should be always be below 0.1, so the, for the prior math difference, no, that is okay. Uh, this is the coupling times 10 to minus 3 then, uh, of the electron, is a further uh, several times 10 to minus 3. Mm -hmm. And there are many constraints you have to worry about. So beyond that, one of the constraints is precisely the electron g minus two that I was talking at the beginning. So this is the correction if you parameterize it with the couplings that you obtain. So you have the you obtain corrections of four, four times ten to minus thirteen. These are below the ten to minus twelve that I told you before. So then that is okay. The most worrisome one is the Babar bounds. So then you have photon plus a prime going to electrons, uh, but now you have the, the, the additional width contribution that uh, kills the branching ratio of train to electrons that uh, can be uh, avoided. So, so you need couplings below 6 times 10 to minus 3, and uh, uh, for, for the non-enhanced contribution that uh, I didn't talk, but if you put an enhanced width, you need couplings below 10 to minus 2, and our couplings are several times 10 to minus 3. So this is not no problem. The left to bounds, when you go E plus C minus going to, to quarks, and uh, you cannot modify the, the jet cross section for more, more than 1%, but the modifications uh, tend to be at the perimeter. So that is not, uh, not a problem. And finally, there's a question that is uh, the origin of the coupling hierarchy between the quark coupling that are for the 0.1 and the, and the electron couplings of for the 10 to minus 3. At the beginning, we thought that maybe you can get the, the electron coupling and the muon coupling to be common from some mixing, but unfortunately, for the enhanced width contribution, you get two large corrections. So that cannot be, so the, so cannot be induced by simply uh, mixing effects. Uh, so therefore, they can acquire simply a common one. Okay, that's about it. That uh, that what I was going to tell you. So, so I, let me conclude. The measure of g minus two has led to a puzzle. If you take the white paper result as a reference, physics and standard model is needed to explain the five sigma discrepancy between theory and experiment. Taking the point of view, I explore some possible explanations, explanation implications. There are many in the literature, and uh, I tell you a little bit about the, the SUSI solution. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, you need to understand why the dynamic vaporization obtained by, by data differ from the one obtained by lattice methods. Uh, there are many possibilities. One is large systematic errors in either the dynamic section or the lattice determination. Or if you trust everything, you need new physics to explain the difference between these two determinations. And I analyze an example of this possibility. I don't know. So it's, uh, in my opinion, if this remains, and uh, um, will be an interesting question. So, and the good news is that further experimental theoretical work is in progress, and we hopefully know the answer soon. Thank you. Measurement of the G minus two is done with physically the same ring, right? The, 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 true. the one that was moved. From that is true. That is true. They, they updated the detector, but it's the same, exactly the same ring. There is an alternative uh, determination that will be performed by the year 2030 in Japan. So by a G minus two experiment, Japan. that would be nice to to know by independent methods, totally independent because you you. Yeah, you worry about some bias.
Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Say, say that they understand the ring. The same, yeah. So you're saying that the ring is... Look, I have never seen a moving done in your life that doesn't have something wrong, but there's something that doesn't Okay, very good. So, I mean, that was moved, that moved across the counter. That, that is true. Everything. It's the same, the same ring. Yeah, the same ring. That is exactly. And it gives, and it was giving consistent results, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, this, this is what worries you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'd like to see a different ring physically. You know, one of the things I always... No, no, I, I know myself, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. And you say, how could it be that they bring it from Brookhaven and to Fermanagh and give the same result? Is it what you're worried about? No, of course. You're worried about Every time you use the same machine same, uh, to the data, you uh -huh. need to know very well your machine. Yeah. Uh, I think they changed the experiment enough to claim that it's an independent experiment, but, but I agree. So Massimo refers to this. This was the original determination that was done with the same ring. That ring that we saw, where the muons moved, was brought from New Heaven to uh, Fermilla. Actually, at the beginning, it was supposed to be coming in helicopters, bringing it. That would have been amazing. And then it came by ship and truck. Unfortunately, but they, they, the Saint Lawrence River, they yeah, correct. They they, they moved from Saint Lawrence River and from Saint Lawrence River, they were supposed to bring by helicopter to, but at the end they brought it by trucks. That uh, that is still uh, was amazing, but uh, helicopter would have been really astonishing. Uh, but yes, that is, so that that was the the same yeah. the same machine, the machine. It's like two different machines that give the same measurement with the arrows. So, well, yeah. Well, I have a question about a bound. So, if you widen it so it's decaying to some stuff, that stuff that is decaying to through itself can scatter against hadrons. So, like, there are these bounds, like, by Pospolov on, like, dark matter being, yeah. like, LS and D. Is that relevant? Yeah. Uh, well, I. We took into account, I believe, all the bounds. Then, uh, which which bound like you are you in, a, in like a fixed target, you make the yeah, yeah, no. thing that the thing that that, that it decays to. Yeah, and then you that, that can scatter against nuclei in a detector. Yeah, no, I, I play with those ideas at some point uh, with a koto. Uh, this this uh, like presumably will not uh, affect those. Yeah. I call it that one question. So can we just? Uh, Use the different to uh, exclusively couple with U or D, then you would have a contribution one to the like a I, I think that the, the only thing that matters here is the difference, the ISO spin breaking difference. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. now we introduce just a two loop contribution, just just you know, proton to the like UD part, and then we have the Z prime inside. Yeah. yeah, the two loop contributions of say, with Z prime, you mean? Yeah, so yeah. Those are very small. They're small, but those uh, are very small. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, the, but, but then what about we just will cover the prime with the S quark then you know we can also then you know S quark like this the uh, maybe it will Yeah no no the S quark is a possibility. You yeah, can then, you can uh, do, yeah. but not two loops, so just one loop, no? Yeah, yeah I mean, but, that, but two loops but just with S quark. Same part, I, I don't think I don't think that. that. As soon as you put two loops, these corrections are so very. You were saying that uh, photo to be plus K minus, how much does it contribute to the G? So the starting with the K meson threshold, the, the, how much do they contribute? So you even you yeah. say A mu pi. Yeah, yeah. Pi. Then, uh, what is about the, A mu KK? How much is it? How uh, much more? Okay, let's check in the part of the yeah. data okay. group uh, so, so, but, but so, it's uh, small. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. The the you didn't mention among the future prospects, the direct measurements, the measurement of the vacuum polarization you want to do. Yeah, yeah, correct. That, that is an what interesting... Is your opinion, that? Well, that is an interesting... Uh, is it going to happen? Uh, presumably, they, they have this uh, proposal. It's at certain. Right? At certain. Should know yes. That would be interesting. I, uh, When I look at it, it looked to me that uh, uh, was uh, well exaggerated, but uh, I... Uh, yeah. I don't remember, so that is a good question. So we, uh, I thought that um, I thought that was not going to be able to check this at the. But let's let's go. Back. I, I don't remember the the reason. But anyway, that that proposal exists, and uh, that will be interesting. Yeah. That is directly measuring 
de Euclidian. De, de alpha. De Euclidian, de Euclidian. Exacto, de dependence. So we'll be sensitive to a drug by compensation contribution test. Yeah, but you don't need to do the special relation. I know, the, but, but yeah. therefore the errors are the question. And then you don't have issues with Right. Yeah, no, that that is true. But the, I okay, we'll see. We'll see. Any questions? Let's discuss that in a second.